Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, what's up? McJibbin here, back with another reaction video. Before we go any further in the Napoleonic Wars series on Epic History TV, I want to check out this Epic History TV video, uh, Napoleonic Infantry Tactics. I think this might have been Melkor again. Melkor is probably used to my shoutouts by now, but uh, if it was someone else, let me know. I'll give you a shout-out. Uh, so yeah, Napole Napoleonic Infantry Tactics. It'd be good to watch this uh, before any going forward just to get a better grasp of how these troops were set up and the reasons behind it. So let's go. Original link to the video down in the description below at the top, like always. Press subscribe. Press subscribe. In the Napoleonic Wars, infantry fought in close order, packed together, standing shoulder to shoulder. But why present such an easy target for the enemy? First, command and... Sorry, pausing so early. Imagine this, all right? You're walking in line, and then off in the distance, like you hear like a, a boom, like a big boom. And I'm assuming the cannonball travels faster than the speed of sound when it's fired. And then you just look to your right, and your, your buddy is just like, he's just gone, like just obliterated. And then you just got to like keep walking forward. Control. Before radios, orders had to be relayed by shouted commands, drums, or bugles. Difficult enough in the smoke and din of battle. Almost impossible if troops were scattered. Second, firepower. Smoothbore muskets were inaccurate beyond about 80 yards, so volley fire, firing en masse, was the best way to inflict physical and psychological damage on the enemy. Third, morale. Soldiers were much more willing to advance into danger or hold the line if they did so together as a unit, urging each other. I wonder how many, just about the firepower, I know, uh, did he say volley fire or something like that, where like you have three or whatever lines of soldiers of like 10 people per line that, because it takes a while to reload. So in order to like keep constant fire going in front of you, you would have to like, shoot and then reload and then behind you up shoot and continue i just i wonder how many lines of people you would need in order to give the first line of people that shot enough time to reload and obviously it would depend on how skilled the soldier is and how used to uh, reloading he is and how familiar with his weapon he is but i'm just wondering like on a good army with good soldiers like how many lines of soldiers do you need in order to like have that continue volley fire and give the front line enough time to, you know, reload. They're on. Fourth, defense against cavalry. Scattered infantry were easy targets for horsemen. Only by sticking together could they fight them off. I was happy. The he basic happy. tactical unit of infantry was the battalion. A French line battalion had, in theory, 840 men, but in practice, nearer five to 600. Our example here has 605 men, a typical strength for a battalion on campaign. The men were divided into six companies, four fusilier companies and two flank companies. On the right, the grenadiers, made up of the tallest, strongest men, often detached to form elite all-grenadier units. And on the left, the voltigeurs, specialist light infantry used for skirmishing in front of the battalion. Skirmishers moved independently, used cover, and fired at will to harass and unsettle the enemy, while preventing enemy skirmishers carry- well, that's, that's pretty cool. So they're, they had this one unit of people whose job it was not to really stay- uh, not, not not stay organized. Not not stay organized, but just to kind of not have the same organized formations of the other ones and just kind of harass and do whatever you can to kind of mess up the other enemy. That's cool. Carrying out the same task. Most armies also had specialist light infantry units for this role, such as the British 95th Rifles, French Chasseurs à Pied, and Austrian and Prussian Jäger battalions. The traditional battlefield formation was the line. All companies formed up alongside each other, three ranks deep. Line formation maximized the number of men who could fire their muskets at the enemy and limited casualties from artillery fire. True, because it would keep on going. Oh my god, that just made me have a very bad thought. But how many people 
Oh my god. If you were in a this is pretty macabre weird question, but it popped in my head, I'm gonna ask anyway. I wonder how many people would have to be in front of you for like a direct cannonball to not kill you. Ugh. But it was extremely vulnerable to cavalry if it could be outflanked. And even for well-drilled troops, it was difficult to keep the line straight while advancing across broken ground. So for maneuver and attack, battalions usually formed a column of divisions. This was a more flexible formation that allowed the battalion to advance quickly, though it presented a larger target to enemy guns, firing solid round shot that would tear through several ranks. And far fewer men could fire their muskets at the enemy. Theoretically, therefore, the battalion would deploy into line before reaching the enemy. But carrying out this slow maneuver under fire wasn't always possible or sensible. So some commanders kept their men in column, relying on momentum to break the enemy line. This was a risky tactic that often worked against raw troops, but led to high casualties when facing better trained yeah, infantry I'd, I'd than British redcoats. A column could be closed up quickly to provide protection from cavalry, or if there was time, could form a square. With bayonets fixed, the battalion formed an all-round defense that often resembled more of a rectangle. Enemy cavalry could surround the battalion, but not break in, as horses won't charge a solid wall of men and steel. Really? But an infantry square was extremely vulnerable to artillery fire. That brings up a good, I just good question popped up in my head. Just, I wonder, like, to what degree could you train a horse not to like fear death or whatever, and just go where you're telling him to go? At, at like what point is it like? No matter how much you train a horse, will the horse just instinctively like not, not do what you're trying to tell him to do? And could only move very slowly. Changing quickly and smoothly from one formation to another, especially under fire, required training, practice, and experience. In 1809, the Austrian army began to use the battalion mass formation. Crude, but more suited to hastily trained conscripts. This seems terrible for cannon. This fire. was a dense column with limited firepower and huge vulnerability to enemy cannon. Yeah, that is a cannoneer's weapon. But it could quickly close up to repel cavalry using the same principle as the square, but without the complex drill, and was much more maneuverable. Wow, that was a great video. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm going to continue the Napoleonic series soon. You guys seem to like that a lot, and that's my favorite thing to react to anyway. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Subscribe, guys. I'd love you to subscribe. Join the table. Pull up a chair. Everyone be nice. See you guys next time.